Uh, YouTube, it's me, TFR Wilderness, and uh, yeah, it's TF Nation Hall time. <laughs> Decided to do a TF Nation, well, a separate TF Nation Hall video because usually when I buy my stuff throughout the course of a month, I save it up and then do an end of month bot haul video. But uh, last year, I sort of went over my TF Nation Hall twice. I sort of did the uh, showed you the stuff in the boxes and then I went over it again in my end of month bot haul showing you the actual figures and uh, giving you my opinions on them. Um, decided not to do that this year. Uh, I wasn't really keen on doing any TF Nation videos passe at all but I've uh, decided to do a separate haul video for my TF Nation because yes I've got rather a large haul again this year. Um, <coughs> Yeah, as I do, um, and I'm sure some people are keen to see what I've got. Uh, so uh, I'm not really going to go much into my convention experience because um, there wasn't really anything special that happened necessarily. Um, it was a fairly normal convention. In fact, it was a little bit disappointing on, on my part because you know I I, I didn't throw myself into the set, uh, festivities as much as I, I normally do. Um, I sort of you know, kept myself to myself. Didn't really, you know, catch up with uh, many friends. I, I caught up with a few friends, but um, you know, I missed out on a lot of things. So uh, it wasn't a fantastic. It wasn't a stellar convention for me. But I did, you know, take a lot of money and buy a lot of stuff. So let's get on with the haul video, shall we? Um, all right. So obviously. I uh, got there a bit late on the Friday because uh, I had to work on the Friday morning. Um, got there, what time was it I got there? It was it was getting on for two o'clock. Anyway, I, I managed to get booked into my room earlier, even though there was a little bit of a, a bit of a screw up. Um, the person who booked me into my room didn't book me in properly. And when I went back to the car to start loading stuff in, my key didn't work. And I had to go back to the, uh, the reception desk. And it turns out oh, the woman went behind. Oh, there's a problem here with your booking. And I had to get another set of keys. Anyway. So yeah, went to get my uh, my wristband and my uh, tour t-shirt because I, I didn't pre-order it <laughs> like I, I do uh, normally. Uh, normally I would uh, pre-order the merch, but I didn't this year. I didn't bother pre-ordering anything. So fortunately, they had some some uh, large shirts uh, ready with the uh, the tour t-shirt. So I like to have the tour t-shirt if I can as a memento of the convention, obviously. Yeah, got me armband. And uh, even though, <laughs> as with previous years, even though the wristband isn't on my wrist anymore, I can actually, I still have that phantom sensation of uh, the wristband being around my wrist, or, or phantom wristbanditis, as I call it. <laughs> I've got it again this year. So anyway, uh, eventually I managed to get a program. Um, they did. They ha they were a bit short of programs when I, I went and got my uh, my wristband. Um, they had a del they, they had a delivery later on, so I managed to pick one up. And then on the Friday, um, one of the things uh, I did on the Friday evening was uh, got together with uh, uh, Matthew Grant, uh, uh, Chris, and Natalie. You know the the, you know, the uh, Transformers and such group, and they managed to get into the uh, the executive lounge. And we uh, sat in the executive lounge for a couple of hours talking, and of course they were helping themselves to the free beer. And in talking to uh, Matthew Grant, he said he'd bought a figure to the convention to sell, and it was um, a Fall of Cybertron Megatron. And I said to him, "I said, well, actually, no, I've been, I've been kind of thinking of getting that figure." And he says, "Oh yeah, this is the um, this is the Takara one." So uh, he got one of his mates to fetch it from the room, and then he brought it down. And uh, yeah, he says it was it was in its box. Uh, sealed, well, it'd been resealed, but uh, you know it was all it was all intact. It was all there. And uh, I checked up online to see how much these things go for, and they they go for like 60, 70 quid, you know, for the uh, the U U United one. Um, so uh, uh, Matthew said 40 quid, and I thought, yeah. So uh, I bought that was my first thing I bought. Well, the first you know toy that I bought on the Friday evening was. Uh, Transformers United UN04, uh, well, Megatron uh, Cybertron mode or whatever they call it because obviously it's the Japanese version, but you know it's for Cybertron Megatron um, in these uh, fancy metallic red colours. So I got him. He's all right. He's pretty cool. So he was the first thing I got, and uh, then obviously it was on to the Saturday. Um, Got had my breakfast, went down and stood in the queue. I wasn't right at the front, but you know, I obviously wanted to get in there early doors. 
because I, even though I didn't have a list as such of stuff to go for this year, I had a rough idea of figures I wanted to go for from the current lines, you know, like Siege and uh, Studio Series. So there were certain things I was going to be looking out for. Fortunately, you know, I'd got some of the figures that I would have got at TF Nation before TF Nation, like, um, well, you know, Toy World Bulldog, um, the, uh, the uh, Ghostbusters Ectotron, and... and a little teaser for my uh, end of month video. I managed to get uh, this guy, but I got him before TF Nation. I didn't get him at TF Nation, so I got me Refractor um, in the week just before TF Nation. So more on that in my end of month bot haul. But anyway, um, so I managed to get into the hall. Obviously, they were they're being careful not to you know, everybody to rush in. They were letting you know people in in groups, and uh, I got in fairly early um, and. Turn left straight to the in demand store, and there was this mountain of siege jet fires. So, yeah, I got me a siege jet fire. Um, now, first of all, um, this is the the opening gambit, so to so to speak. I mean, I have a huge amount of cash that I take to the conventions. I usually split it in half. You know, I, I like to spend half of it on the Saturday and half of it on the Sunday. So, you know, it was it was bedlam. It was there were so many people there. But uh, I, I, this is the first thing I grabbed. Didn't look at the price when I grabbed it. I just, I just, I just grabbed it and then turned around and went on to the uh, the other rack and started plucking things off, like Siege Springer, Siege Thundercracker, Siege Brunt. Siege Red, Red, Red Alert. And Siege Chromia. So yeah, I got that little lot together and went up to the to the uh, you know the the cashier and uh, it was so busy I had to stand there for a, for about ten minutes before I got served. And uh, when the, the guy ran up the total of that little lot, he said, Oh, 210 pounds. It's like okay, you know, just just doled out the money. And it wasn't until I got back to the room that uh, on my, after my, my first sort of, uh, when I filled my bag up, um, I realised how much this guy, how much I paid for this guy, like 95 quid. And it's, now, I know for a fact that in, in a couple of months' time, when this guy hits retail, he will be less than that. I think he'll be around about the £80 mark, 79 99 something like that. I'm sure if I go to the um, MCM Comic Con in Birmingham, In Demand will have their stall there, and they'll be doing this for about 85 quid. Um, I'd heard rumours that this guy, what might not have been at the convention, I'd heard rumours that you know, you know, the delivery of toys had been snarled up in UK customs, but obviously In Demand got their delivery in and they had a huge amount of them, and there were still some left on the Sunday. So even if I hadn't have bought this guy for ninety five quid, you know, at the, the start of the, you know the uh, Saturday trade in, I probably would have bought him later on. But still, I still think. If I'd have been a little bit patient and waited a couple of months, I would have been able to pick this guy up for a, for a little less. But he's a decent figure. I like him. He's all right. He's got some nice gimmicks. Um, he's very, very big. Um, he, he's cool. Um, I don't mind Jetfire. He's, he's not one of my uh, hugely favourite characters, but uh, I've got a couple of Jetfires in my collection, and uh, I thought I'd get this one. So, yeah, I picked him up, and he was the first thing I bought on the Saturday morning. Then, obviously... I got uh, I got the new vo new uh, voyages from is it Wave Three um, Springer and Thundercracker. Now I was definitely going to get a Thundercracker because Thundercracker is my secret of choice. So I skipped on the uh, the the uh, Star Scream and went for the Thundercracker. So fortunately I had some there. Um, I was on the fence about getting Springer, but uh, as he was there and I had a quick look at him in the box and thought actually he looks half decent. So I went and got him and uh, yeah they're 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 both really really good figures. Um, Obviously, this thing being a, a Generations Voyager, it's uh, it's it's really really good. You know, it it does all three modes quite well, and uh, yeah, it's a Blue Seeker. You know, in the fall of, in the um, in the Siege design. So uh, yeah, I got these guys. So uh, it's quite happy to get them. And then obviously the Deluxes from the new wave. 
Now, Brunt, I really, really wanted to get hold of Brunt, and I, I thought there was going to be a shortage of them, but fortunately, in demand had quite a few. So I got Brunt. I mean, I love the look of this guy. I mean, look at that purple. It just amazing. So much... And the nice molded detail, nice paint apps on this guy. I mean, come on, he's got like these big, massive, you know, crab claw things. You know, he's got like the jaws for life for hands. <laughs> um, he's got a head sculpt that looks like a like a Cylon warrior. You know, it's he, he's he's really really cool. Um, and yeah, he's another weaponizer. You can take him apart and plug him into other characters to armor him up. Um, he's a really cool little figure. Um, I know they're doing a separate Siege Impactor, but if they hadn't have done that, they could easily have remolded and repainted this as Impactor, and I'd have been perfectly happy with it. Um, but yeah, so he was the, the main sort of deluxe figure that I was after. Uh, then I got Red Alert. Um, I didn't go for Sideswipe, um, because, I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of Sideswipe. No disrespects to the character, you know, a lot of people are a fan of Sideswipe, but... I've got a couple of red alerts in my uh, collection, and I thought I'd go wait for the uh, the red alert version. So uh, I got it. Lovely mold, great mold. Like the way it transforms. Um, now there's this thing about uh, the the head sculpt. Mine has got like the repainted side swipe head sculpt. It hasn't actually got the red alert head sculpt on it. But I didn't know about that until after the event when I saw someone else talking about it on a on a YouTube video. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a decent little figure. He's a He's pretty cool, got him. And Siege Chromia. Um, now, I wanted to get this thing anyway, because I, I, no, I quite like Chromia as a character. I mean, I really like her portrayal in uh, IDW to All R1, where she was like Windblade's bodyguard, and she was a complete and utter badass in that. Um, so yeah, I wanted to get another version. I've got the Generations one, but you know, the, the bike kibble's just too much on it. I mean, okay, this thing's got a lot of car kibble on it as well, so it's not much better, to be honest. Um, also, if you uh, turn her waist joint, her pants pop off. Like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got a you know, separate uh, pants section that uh, clips on, and then when you try to turn her waist joint, her pants pop off, you know. <laughs> her knickers pop off, so it's uh, that's interesting. Um, now, I actually wanted to get this because I want to use it as uh, material for a tag challenge video that I'm thinking of resurrecting. So I'm not going to say much more about that, but uh, yeah. So that's the, one of the main reasons why I wanted to get this. But I was going to get this character anyway. I think she's alright. She's not too bad. It's like a heavily retooled version of the, uh, the Moon Racer mold. But it's a decent enough character. I'm quite happy with it. Right, so that was the sort of the opening gambit, but I mean, we're still talking, this was like in the first sort of half an hour in the hall. So um, I did that, and obviously I, when I got those, I also got given one of these, because uh, In Demand was handing out uh, Series 3 bot bots. So as you can see, it's still sealed, I haven't opened it, so let's, do, let's, let's find out together who we've got. Right, so... Right, so... There we got. Okay, who's this guy? I ain't got a clue because I haven't been looking at the siege, the uh, the way free uh, bot bots. Dingle dee doo. <laughs> Music mob. Some sort of a uh, some sort of bell kind of thing. There we go. There he is. Yeah, Dingle Dee Doo from the Music Mob. Uh, <laughs> uh, bot bots. I've got a few. I've got um. I've got uh, a load from uh, season one. Uh, I do like the concept of them. They're great. They're great little 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 collectible things. But uh, I, I don't want to get too wrapped up in them because I, I reckon it's a bit of a rabbit hole for me. Because I, I could go mad and collect them all, and th there's hundreds of the things. So uh, I, I, I'm deliberately staying off them. I don't want to get too involved with them. So, but I got to give that as a freebie from In Demand. So uh, I thought I'd just uh, open open that up and uh, 
show it off. Right, so what next? Uh, yeah, still on the uh, in-demand store. I went over to where their Studio Series stuff was and got me uh, got me a Studio Series Helicopter Drift. Um, I know it's a retool of the, uh, the Dropkick mould. Um, this is a lot more difficult to transform than Dropkick, mainly because it, it's all made out of this this black plastic it's difficult to see what bits move where and uh, they have you know changed the transformation a little bit in a few areas and it's uh, it took me a little while to figure it out but uh, I've got all the the drift helicopter modes now I've got the uh, the Skyhammer remold I've got that that one step changer thing and now I've got uh, this one which is a little bit more screen accurate um, just turn that autofocus off because it's planar up right so yeah I've got him and then um, on the back of the in-demand store around the far, the far end, they had a couple of like pre-owned sort of third party figures sort of stacked up on the back of the, uh, the table. And I looked round and I saw one. I thought, oh, actually, I've been after one of those. <clears throat> the KBB undersized um, Voyager scale MP10 KO that MP10U. It's basically the, the the white Prime Ultra Magnus MP10, but scaled down to Voyager scale. I mean, there you go. Well, you see, he's just a little bit bigger than the Springer, and he's uh, obviously a modern Voyager, so he's not very big. So yeah, I've been looking at getting this thing off uh, AliExpress, and if you get it off AliExpress. Um, uh, with the box it can cost you around about sort of 55 60 quid but they were doing it for 40 quid and it was boxed um, it's used as far as I know because obviously someone's put a, a repro label on it so it's, it's obviously someone's had a go with this before um, but apart from that it was all in all 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 intact everything's mint everything's there um, cool um, been uh, like I said been after after one of these um, I don't have a problem with white uh, white prime ultra magnuses Unlike uh, Mr. John G, you know, uh, Mr. Borders dude. <laughs> I've got quite a few of them, actually. Um, but, yeah, I was looking at getting hold of this guy. So, yeah, he was there. So I picked him up. That's the uh, the KBB, what's it called? Uh, VSS 10, no, 10UV. <laughs> it's, it's, it's got a really um, awkward uh, uh, sort of name to it. Um, so that was in demand. Right, so that now I started wandering around the hall looking for other bits. And I went over to the uh, Nottingham Robot Company because uh, in demand didn't seem to have any of the other Studio Series figures that I was after. They'd pro I think they'd sold out of uh, particular characters. So I went around to the uh, Nottingham uh, Robot uh, Company and got me got me Studio Series Shatter. Now, this thing's a <laughs> pretty bad actually. A lot of kibble, um, transformations not fun, bits pop off, um, these pieces they just come off ever so easy. Um, so when you're transforming it, bits fall off. Uh, the shoulders, you know, they pop off ever so easily. Um, and her head sculpt's totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> hasn't got Shatter's head sculpt. It's got got what, what like a like a it looks like a like a like a, a red scarf around the top and a, and a gimp mask on. You know it's come on. Oh yeah. There we go. As you can see, it's it's not much of a face sculpt. So, and it's not that fun to transform. To be honest. Um, Barely compacts into the car mode. I mean, it's a great looking car, but it's, it's a bit of a pain to get there. And it doesn't quite peg together properly. There's loads of gaps in it. So, yeah, not a massive fan of this, but I wanted to get her anyway. So, yeah, I got her. Then uh, I went over to Kapow at the, the far end of the hall and got her uh, compadre. I got hold of uh, Studio Series Dropkick car mode. Um... Now, again, this figure has got a really fussy transformation. It's really, there's a lot going on. You know, cramming all the limbs into his car mode is a bit, a bit of a pain. But saying that, he does peg together a lot better than uh, Dropkick. 
a lot less kibble in car mode. Actually has got a uh, proper head sculpt. As you can see there. He's got a proper head sculpt. And uh, he's very nice and solid in car mode. So I would say out of the two, this is the better figure to get. Um, it's still not that great to mess with. Um, the joints aren't too bad. Bits don't seem to pop off this guy when you're transforming it. Um, but, you know, it, it has got a really awkward <laughs> transformation. It, it's not really that much fun to transform. But, you know, when you get to car mode, I mean, the car mode and the robot mode look, look good. It's just going between the two is uh, a bit of a pain. But, uh, yeah, got hold of drop kick from Kapow. Then... Then I went into the Gundam wing and had a quick look round because um, mainly I was uh, I was after some uh, some nippers um, because I, I could really do with some for you know for my you know, Transformer collecting mainly you know when you get a uh, Transformers figure it's got them stupid plastic toys on it usually I use a craft knife to to you know cut them off but some nippers you know just go around tick 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 you know nip them off so uh, I bought a pair of uh, Bandai Spirits entry nippers in white. Um, they're all right. Uh, they were ten quid. Um, probably could have got some better quality ones. These ones they don't work every time. You know, sometimes the the, the blades don't quite slice through whatever you're nipping. They just sort of overlap a bit, and it uh, doesn't quite work properly. But they're all right. Uh, got hold of those. Then. Right, then I went over to Toy Fu and uh, had a look at their vast array of uh, pre-owned plastic on their table. And it's always good to buy stuff from Toy Fu because, you know, it all goes to a, a good course. And I've uh, been looking to get hold of some uh, animated figures and uh, got me animated sound wave with uh, Laserbeak. So, yeah, got him. Uh, he was uh, 25 quid. So, uh, Laserbeak that... Uh, Makes the guitar, and uh, he's got the. Uh, it's a Honda. Is it is it D DB Honda DB? It's based on this vehicle mode. The Honda is it the decibel? Um, but uh, yeah, so I got got him. So he's uh, he's really cool. And then. I was also looking on the table, and I saw something else, and I thought, oh, actually, you know what? I've been really after one of those. Real Gear Mean Time. Now, um, I a couple of years ago, I was at uh, TF... Uh, no, not TF Nation. Um, I was at um, Rollout Roll Call 2015, and Toy Fu had a bunch of the Real Gear uh, bots on their table. And the last thing on the Sunday, I, I bought a bunch of them for a pound each. And uh, they had five of them there, but they were missing this guy. They didn't have the, uh, the watch bot. So I was looking at the store, and the front of their store, they had this guy, and I thought, you know what? I've been after that guy. Um, I have. I know this guy has been knocked off quite a lot. There's a lot of knockoffs going around uh, based on this mould. Um, I was tempted to get one of those, but uh, I've now got the uh, got the original guy. These real gear bots are really neat. They're really awesome. They've got a decent amount of articulation. They've got really sweet little transformations, and they turn into a, like a little bit of tech. You know, it's. I really like them. Um, this turns into a what wristwatch, obviously. Um, unfortunately, it's not. Big enough to get round an adult wrist. <laughs> Doesn't quite clip together, but uh, yeah, um, I love it. It's it's uh, it's a great little thing, and uh, managed to pick that guy up. Been after him for a while. Then I went round to see my mate James Lie at Maximil of Toys, and uh, as you know, I, I went down to James' place uh, a couple of weeks ago to see him in uh, Portsmouth, and uh, he had all his. Uh, Sales stock in boxes in his living room, <laughs> including them uh, third party combiners on the mad mantelpiece. You know, he had uh, he had the uh, the Zeta Toys, um, the Zeta Toys uh, Superion, the Zeta Toys Bruticus, and he had like the Toy World um, constructor, you know, G2 colors in the yellow in the middle, you know, and he had the um, the Predator Kings, he had the uh, the the Power of the Primes Predator Kings, an official one, and the third, and the um, the knockoff one from Wei Jang. And looking at the two, the Wei Jang one is just so much better. Even though it's not really an oversized, it's about the same size, but it's got so many other improvements to it that you know I'm very tempted to get one. So I'm I'm looking on AliExpress to 
getting into that perhaps. But um, I always like to buy something from James because James is a mate and uh, it's James, it's my mate James. And I uh, was looking on his store and I noticed he had the TFC Hercules set of six on his, uh, on his table. And I thought, you know, I've still been hankering after a TFC Hercules and uh, he was doing it for 120 quid and uh, one of the uh, figures was missing his instructions, Mad Blender was missing his instructions, but they aren't the most difficult thing to transform. Um, it's got repro labels on it and it appears to have all, all the rest of his accessories, so uh, yeah, I went and bought it. <laughs> so TFC Hercules is mine now. Um, I wanted to get this because for historical significance, you know, this is the first third party combiner and, you know, it set the standard for all, you know, sort of third party combiners to come and even influenced, you know, um, Hasbro and Takara to some extent. Um, it's very dated now, uh, you know, there's, there's so much, much bigger and more better engineered and better aesthetic, you know, combiners out there. But this is this is where it all began. This is the, the, the start of it. Um, obviously, I've got him into combine mode. Um, it hasn't got the Rage of uh, Hercules add-on set. I, I'm, I might get that, but it's because it's a, 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 a an add-on set that's out of print, it's difficult to get hold of for a cheap price now, and I, I may or may not get it. If I see it coming up at a decent price, I might go for it, but uh, I'm quite happy with him as the way he is. Um, as this is a used toy, unfortunately, yeah... The uh, ratchets on the hips are very, very loose. Um, he struggles to stand up. Uh, you, you plonk it down on the table and he, he just sort of falls over backwards because <laughs> the ratchets just can't hold his weight. I mean, I have tightened up some of the knee ratchets a little bit, but the hip ratchets are, you know, so much giving on luck. But still, that's not the reason why I bought it. I bought it because of what it represents in terms of a, a historical toy, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm very pleased I got it. And I, I got it for a really good price, I think, for 120 quid. So yeah, so I uh, went and got uh, TFC Hercules off my mate James on the Maxime Love Toy Stall. Right, then, uh, then I wandered over to the Space Bridge and noticed they had the uh, Transformers Authentics Grimlocks on there still. So I got the uh, Transformers Authentics Bar Bravo, no, um, Alpha and the Transformers Authentics Bra uh, Bravo. Uh, so Alpha and Bravo. So you've got the big one and the small one. It's basically the same mold. There's a few minor differences between them in paint apps and uh, engineering bits. They're garbage, to be honest. I mean, Transformers Authentics, they're very crude. They were designed for a reason. They're designed to be cut price transformer toys to be sold in, you know, sort of, you know, well, I wouldn't say third world markets, but, you know, in, in like South America markets and stuff like that, where, you know, people haven't got a great deal of um, disposable income, but they can still, you know, still buy, you know, a, a transforming toy that uh, looks like a, a well known character. Um, in demand, uh, uh, sorry, not in demand. Um, Space Bridge had both of them, so I picked them up. I think it was 10 quid for the small guy and 15 quid for the big guy, so I was quite happy with that. Um, like they're, they're, they've got super, they got so much hollowness on the back of the legs. <laughs> you know, they struggle to stand up, <laughs> but, and, you know, they're, they're very rattly. Um, there's a bit of parts forming involved to put them together when you get them out of the pack, and, you know, this one, the wings are all loose, and, you know, when you're transforming them, bits pop off, you know, it, it's, it's all that. They ain't exactly great quality, but, you know, I wanted to get them because I'm a collector of Grimlocks and I wanted to get both of these moulds just so as I've got an example of them in my collection. So, yeah, I got hold of those from the Space Bridge. Then, uh, the last couple of bits I got on the Saturday, uh, went over back over to... Um, went back over to uh, Toy Fu. Revenge of the Fallen Scout Class uh, Ransack, uh, yeah, the uh, First World War biplane. Uh, been wanting to get hold of this. I mean, I know they did a, they did a Red Max repaint of this, which I I much prefer to have, but I'm quite happy with this one. Um, obviously, I wanted to get this because it's it's a neat little transformer in itself. I mean, the the Revenge of the Fallen Scout Class figures are, are really cool. They're really awesome figures. I mean, you've got um, 
you know, uh, what, what other figures are in that line? Well, there's, there's, there's loads of really cool figures, that, molds that came out of the Scout class line from uh, Revenge of the Fallen. Um, so, yeah, I got him. Um, I'm really looking to get hold of that um, Toy World, uh, First World War. Uh, what is it? It's a, it's a Fokker DR1 Dry Decker. Yeah, it's the, 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 the triplane from uh, the First World War that the... Uh, uh, the red back, the red Max, or the red Baron used to fly. Um, they're doing it in silver and a couple of repaints, including a red Baron repaint. So I'll probably be getting hold of that hopefully at some point. But yeah, I've got hold of uh, Ransack. He's a pretty neat little transformer. Then, then I come across Mr. Zort Rider walking around the hall, and uh, he uh, he stopped me and then sort of groped in his bag and uh, pulled out this guy. Energon Minicon Dead End. Now this is the Minicon that is supposed to go with Energon Unicron. And uh, I picked an Energon Unicron up at uh, an NEC Toy Fair last year. And uh, Zort Rider happened to be there. And um, he did mention to me, I said, did it come with the Minicon? And I said, no. And he said, well, I've got one of these at home. I'll have to sort it out for you. And then later on in the uh, in you know, in the morning, walking around the hall, he was, he was getting short of money. And uh, he saw um, uh, a Paw Patrol... Uh, transforming sort of figure thing or, or it, uh, that he wanted to get for his kid but he didn't quite have enough cash for it so I, I lent him the two quid to so that he could get it and uh, I said to him I said well actually you know, take that as payment for that uh, minicon you're going to give to me so uh, yeah he saw me and uh, at uh, TF Nation and uh, gave me the, the minicon I'm missing for my uh, unicron so uh, thanks for that uh, Richard much appreciated uh, nice to see you remembered awesome he's a great little figure it turns into a little, little sort of like a little version of the Unicron planet, but uh, he's got this, he's got this huge gun. <laughs> so yeah, got him off uh, Mr. Zort Rider, and um, then um, back to Toy Fu. Now actually no, it wasn't Toy Fu. I actually went to one of the other stalls. It was um, what were they called? Uh, Leicester vintage you know Leicester vintage old toy store or shop or something whatever they were called and I noticed they had one of the uh, Beast Machines Viacon Megatron box on their stall for 25 quid and, and, I, and I looked in my wallet and I didn't quite have enough cash so I dashed back to the room and broke into my um, well not my cash for the Sunday I broke into my because I had some extra cash for uh, spending on uh, food and drink at the convention and I'd already broken into it to buy that um that United Megatron off uh, off uh, Matthew Grant, but uh, I went in and I, I totted up and I got the twenty five quid together. Went back down and he'd sold it. It had gone. Yeah, uh, so many times I get this. You see something, you you don't buy it straight away. You think, oh, I'm going to come back for that later, or you haven't got enough money, and you go back and get your money, and then someone's bought it. Well, you snooze, you lose. Um, but then I went over to the. Um, the, uh, I asked him about the, the, the other uh, Megatron that I wanted to get from Beast Machines, even though it was part of the R.I.D. line, which was Megabolt Megatron. And the guy said, he says, oh, I think, um, I think Toy Fu had one of those on their stall. Um, so I went over to Toy Fu and had another look and couldn't see the Megabolt Megatron. I asked them about it and they'd already sold it, obviously. Again, you snooze, you lose. I didn't even know they had one, but had I known, I would have definitely made a play on it. Um, but uh, they did have a used... Viacon Megatron. So I did manage to get my uh, my uh, Viacon Megatron after all. Um, it was about I think was it fifteen quid or something. Um, and also now I don't know whether I got this earlier in the day, but I did pick it up at some point. And that was uh, yeah, uh, Toy Fu was handing out these these small soldiers. They always do these fan scenes every year. They're a limited number, but you know people who make a significant purchase from their stall. They get one of these. Now I got one of these over some point on the Saturday. I can't remember when it was exactly. It might have been earlier in the day when I was getting the um, getting the uh, the uh, animated sound wave and the uh, the real gear. Mean time. Uh, I think I was handed it then. But uh, yeah, so I got hold of the uh, the toy Fu fanzine. And yeah, Beast Machines Megatron. So he's got his Transmetal two. Robot mode and it does turn into the dragon, but he also you know you, you can flip the cloak cloak round and he, he sort of looks like The control harness that he 
he goes into when he's you know floating around in 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 the control base and uh, you know commanding the vehicons. It kind of does that. So I wanted it this toy because of that reason. Um, it's not a fantastic toy. It has its issues, but you know it's just a version of one of the many many uh, forms that uh, Megatron took in Beast Machines. And as this convention was was based on Beast Machines, I wanted to get at least one Beast Machines toy, and and this was it. Shame I didn't get the Megabolt Megatron, but that never made it into the Beast Machines toy line. That sort of carried over into the R.I.D. Uh, toy line. But um, yeah, so got him because obviously he's got the uh, he's got the uh, the dragon arm. And uh, yeah, so I got him off uh, Toy Foo. And then. Um, I was just wandering around looking at the, uh, this, this is the final thing I got on the uh, the Saturday, uh, I was wandering around looking at the, the Forge and I come across um, Zero Kaiser's stall and I was looking at some of his stuff and then uh, mentioned about the uh, refined robot company fanzine and uh, he happened to have it so uh, he gave me one. Um, yeah, I would have liked to have got one off Ben because uh, Ben was uh, walking around in the bar, you know, handing them out but uh, I never actually managed to get one from Ben. Usually I get mine from... Uh, from uh, Mr. Vigadef, uh, Dorian, he usually hand gets, gets them for me. But yeah, volume three of the uh, Refined Robot Company fanzine, um, pretty good. Um, lots of eye-watering uh, artwork from uh, Mr. Ben, uh, <laughs> Mr. Wasp Shot. So uh, yeah, it's great that these guys go to the trouble of making these things at these conventions. They're, they're really great. I mean, I, I used to do a fanzine myself for Banger Racing back in the day. Um, ADI, what is it, Auto Destruction Inca Race, ADI, um, I used to do banger racing back in the day, I used to be uh, based at uh, Inca Race at Birmingham Wheels and uh, Hendersford Raceway, and uh, I uh, used to run a fanzine for a little bit, so, and it was all photocopied, you know, <laughs> it was a photocopied fanzine, but uh, nowadays, you know, you can, you can just print them off on your computer or you know, just just do your, your your proofs and just send them to a local printer, and they'll do them all for you. So, yeah, great. Uh, managed to get hold of that, and uh, that was it for Saturday. So that was my haul for Saturday, <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, I don't like to talk costs in my videos anymore. But you know, that was over five hundred quid worth of stuff I spent on the Saturday. But the funny thing is, I still had the same amount of money again to spend on the Sunday. So. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I, what I do is I, I have these massive wadges of cash that I bring to these conventions, but I, I save it up over the course of the year. Like like now, I'm I'm starting to save up for next year's convention. I, I have a little bit of money that transfers out of one account to another, and it builds up over the course of the year. And then I've got you know like a, a big wadge of cash I can then draw out the uh, the building society and then take to the convention and just basically go mad and buy what I want and. I'm a bit of a rabid connect collector, you know. I, I I'm a pretty serious collector. I like to, you know, I see it, I want it, I buy it. You know, it's it's just just the way that I work. But um, anyway, so yeah, uh, moving on to well, actually, before we move on to um, the uh, the Sunday haul, obviously, getting back to Mr. Zort Rider again in the bar on uh, Saturday night. He was wandering around and handing out his uh, little postcards that he's done with uh, his artwork on. So that was great. So uh, thank you for that, Richard. Uh, yeah, um, interesting, you know, Power Master Optimus Prime, Cosmos, Starscream, Soundwave, Megatron. Outback. I'm a bit confused about Outback. I mean, obviously, I can understand the Chrome Dome and Rewind, but Outback? <laughs> I'm a little confused by that, but, uh, yeah, uh, these awesome little postcards it was handing out, so I managed to get hold of one of them off Mr. Zort Rider on the uh, Saturday, so uh, thanks for that, Richard. So, yeah, again, that's, that's Saturday done, so let's move on to Sunday. Because this video is already 40 minutes. Right, um, now, uh, I had, I've been talking to people in the bar on Saturday night and uh, they'd, I'd mentioned a few things that I'd missed out on in the hall on the Saturday, like uh, animated shockwave. I wanted an animated shockwave, but there was a couple on the um, the Toy Foo stall, but I, I didn't jump in and get them. And then I'd heard rumours that um, um, Dave Tree on All the Cool Stuff had a boxed one on his stall. So the first thing I did when I went in on Sunday morning was went to Dave Tree, all the cool stuff, and I was looking for this animated shockwave, and he didn't have one. Now, I know Kapow had a, the purple one 
a, 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 a pre-owned one on the back, no, a used one, a loose one on the back of their stall on the Sunday. But I, I want to get the grey one because it turns into long arm. So I want to get that one. So I was looking around uh, uh, all the cool stuff, looking at this stuff, and I was w w looking around, looking around, and then I spied something. I thought, oh, yeah, I want one of those. Transformers Robots in Disguise Bisque. Um, yeah, I've got the I've got the blue one. Um, I've got him because this guy got released in the UK. This one didn't. Um, for some reason, there was there was there was a particular wave of RID figures that sort of skipped the UK completely, and it was the wave that had Bisque and Ratchet in. And um, now Dave actually had a Ratchet there as well, but he was asking thirty quid for it, and I thought that's a little bit too steep. I mean, he was asking 20 quid for this, but if you have to try and buy one of these online from America, you know, you'd be paying like 35, 40 quid for it easy, and it's it's, it's just not worth it for an RID toy. But he had it for 20 quid, and I thought, you know what, I've got a glut of money. To, <laughs> I can afford to buy it. So, yeah, got me uh, Bisque, and uh, Bisque is a great character in the show when he does appear, especially in his debut episode. I think it's episode five where he's fighting the Autobots at the beginning of the episode. He, he's really funny. And he's orange, I like the colour orange, so yeah, a nice uh, bright orange lobster bot, bring it on. So yeah, got him from Mr. Dave Tree. Uh, then, right, now, um, now, uh, Comic Connections Banbury, um, I'm a customer of theirs through uh, Spa Town Comics um, in Leamington, because um, they're, they're connected to uh, Comic Connections every Friday, you know, I go up town, go and see Richard. The, uh, the comic guy and get my comics off him. Uh, I did that today actually, you know, but you'll see that on my end of month butthole. Um, so yeah, um, so you got uh, Sid, Mr. Sino Kibble, runs uh, Comic Collections and obviously I'd been talking to him in the bar on uh, so, uh, Saturday night and I'd noticed something on his stall. On, well, it's actually Saturday afternoon I noticed this and I said, you know, I might, might make a play on that on Sunday and so I did. So from Comic Connections, I got this, which is um, a KFC Heavy Metal Phase 3A, I think it's Phase 3A, Die Commander Stacks. It's their um, Delta Magnus version, or their Diaclone Ultra Magnus version of, you know, G1 Ultra Magnus. Yeah, um, I've been... I, I like collecting my Ultra Magnuses, and I've been thinking about getting the, uh, the uh, Citizen Stacks you know, KFC version, but uh, he had the, you know, the Die Commander stacks. And I thought, you know what, it'd be nice to have this as, you know, just a representation of Ultra Magnus and his, you know, his um, Delta Magnus or, you know, his Diaclone um, colours in my collection. So, yeah, uh, I've got this. It's used, uh, it's missing the instructions, but um, I've got it for 70 quid, so I'm quite happy about that. And for an early, you know, KFC product, it's it, it's pretty good. It's a uh, really solid, decent joints. You know, it's a it's a pretty cool figure. So uh, glad I got hold of him. Then I went over to Kapow and decided to look at some of the uh, third party uh, legends offerings that they've got. So. I got New Age Monero, their little Legends scale jazz. He's he's really really cool. He's an awesome little figure, brilliant little figure. And I got Magic Squares Trailblazer, which is their uh, their Trailbreaker. And I've got a thing for Trailbreaker. I'm not exactly mold set collecting Trailbreaker, but I have got quite a few Trailbreaker molds, and I saw this and uh, I thought I'd get it. Again, it's Magic Square. You know, the transformation on the, the way the legs work on this is absolutely brilliant. I love it. Really cool little figure. Awesome. Uh, and then, again, I started dashing around from dealer to dealer, just, just buying bits here, there, and everywhere. Um, now, um, as I said earlier with uh, my Chromia, there's a, a, a tag challenge that I'm video that I'm thinking of doing in the future. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do it. I need to talk to the various people that are going to be tagged with it because it's uh, to see if they're uh, game for a laugh. Um, so, yeah. And uh, now I bought these from uh, two separate stalls. Um, 
SO Robot Racer um, Command Van from Toy Fu. And I got the SO Robot Racer Mixer from the the um, Leicester Vintage Old Toy Store. So I got two Robot Racers. So I just transform this guy back. So as you can see, they're two little red and yellow pickup trucks. One's got a, a mixer drum on the back, and the other's got this little little back which opens up, and it's got it's got like missiles in it. Now, um, another tag challenge that I did was the uh, the POTP challenge, the Polish Old Turd Plastic, and a certain YouTuber in Canada did a review for his POTP video of this thing. Um, now, I've been thinking. I'd like to get hold of one of these and uh, tag in with this other tag challenge that uh, I'm uh, planning on uh, resurrecting. And uh, so now this one was pretty beat up uh, and this one was in better condition. So I bought this one as spares basically and I've transferred the bits over. Like this is, the engine doesn't work on this one. And the, uh, as you can see, the, uh, the grill pieces are missing. So the grill pieces are in this one and... You can see the, the, the sparkler motor still works in it. So yeah, I got hold of these guys. Um, they're crappy little bots, but they're historical. You know, they used to sell these in petrol stations, SO petrol stations in, in Canada and the UK in the 1980s. So, you know, they've got interest, interesting historical significance. And uh, that's part of the reason why I bought them. Also, I bought them as fodder for a tag challenge. So, yep, got hold of those. Then um, decided I wanted another t-shirt, uh, so I went round to um, Lucan's Tees, that little stall in the middle where uh, Gary Churn, you know, Hot Roddy Prime was helping out on with his mate, selling all these t-shirts, and uh, went over and had a natter and was looking at the various tees, and I wanted a nice bright colourful t-shirt, ideally I wanted like a yellow one or a green one, or um, they didn't particularly have the, have the designs I wanted in the colours that I wanted, so eventually I settled upon... Yeah, the uh, the Predator King, orange Predator King t-shirt. So yeah, got one of those. So that's another t-shirt that I've uh, another t-shirt that I've got. Got that. Um, we're we're sort of on the home stretch now. Um, Masterpiece Shockwave MP twenty nine plus uh, the toy coloured one. Uh, now, I like my Shockwave, you know, as you can see from my haul videos, I've been buying a lot of them Cyberverse ones lately. Um, <laughs> been buying quite a lot of Shockwaves. Uh, obviously got the Siege one earlier in the year. And I like Shockwave, you know, um, as regards to Masterpiece Shockwave, I've got the uh, the Quake Blast, the, uh, the, the Cloud9 Quake Blast, which is all the Masterpiece Shockwave I could ever want. But I did kind of wouldn't mind the Masterpiece one because it's got like a, a fairly neat transformation. Um, the only problem is the official masterpiece one was in the tune colours, which is the, the the pale purple, and that doesn't work for me because um, I'm you know G1 Comics Shockwave man. You know I like my Shockwaves to be in the darker purple. And when they said they was going to be doing the Shockwave in the darker purple as part of this you know plus line, I thought yeah I wouldn't mind one of those. But you know he's quite pricey for what he is, um, considering you can get the 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 regular one for a lot less money. Um, and I noticed, um, now I don't know whether I saw this right, um, I'm sure on the Saturday I saw this on the um, Indie Man store for 130 something, I think 132 or 138 quid. And uh, I looked at it and I thought, mm, maybe that's something to get later on. And then on the Sunday when I wanted this guy, uh, I went to the Indie Man store and they were, they were asking 150 quid for it. Now whether or not they put the price up, I don't know. It was probably always 150 quid and I wasn't paying much attention, so I'm not saying that... Uh, you know, there was price fixing going on again this year, like last year, but um, so I decided to go over to Kapow and uh, I got to him from Kapow for 150 quid. But yeah, Masterpiece shock, Shockwave. Um, <laughs> what's not to like? Um, I'm really, uh, I'm glad they did it in the the darker purple. Um, I would have liked to have got it for a bit cheaper price, but um, you know, I had plenty of money to spare, so it was no big deal spending the, the money to get this guy. So yeah, got hold of him. 
he's uh, he's really really cool. And then um, over to the space bridge, uh, looking at the space bridge, various things of uh, mild interest. And then I looked on the back and I saw a, a box on their, their backdrop of a figure that um, I've sort of been halfway interested in getting in the past, even though I've got a version of the mold already. Takara Fire Blast Grimlock. Uh, yeah, so this is the uh, Fall of Cybertron mold, uh, painted up in Fire Blast colours. Um, I've got the animated one is in there. I've also got the the Planet X Hephaestus. So I think I've got all the Fire Blast mold, the Fire Blast Grimlock molds now. I don't know if there's any more. I think they've only done three. Obviously, uh, the light up features um, work. I put some batteries in it because the old batteries were, were that were in there were a bit um, a bit uh, a bit leaky and corroded, but I managed to get it working. Yeah, Fire Blast Grimlock. I mean, love these colours. It looks amazing. Um, the mould's not that great, as we know. It's the Fall of Cybertron mould. If you want a decent version of this character, you can get, get the Planet X one. You know, it, it's way more chunkier and transforms a lot better. But, you know, they had it there. It, it's a used one, but it's in virtually mint condition uh, for 40 quid. So, uh, yeah, I uh, went in on that. And... Then on the space bridge, I was still looking around and uh, Revenge of the Fallen Skids and Mudflap, the Ice Cream Twins uh, version. Um, again, another figure that I've been thinking of getting mainly because you know they transform into this shonky looking <laughs> ice cream van from like the 1950s. I love that. Um, they split up into two separate bots. Um, I know the robots aren't really much that much cop, but actually they're, they're quite co complex the way they transform and you get two Reasonably interesting bots even though I've got the other versions the um, the Chevy Volt and the, um, the, the The other one, you know, the, the other car former versions uh, from Revenge of the Fall and they did later, but uh, Yeah, you know, he's got the Got the little pop-up head <laughs> But yeah, I wanted to get one of those. Um, they were doing it loose for 30 quid. Um, but, you know, again, like I said, I, I had a lot of money on the, the Sunday to play with. So I wasn't uh, didn't mind paying that for it. So I uh, got him. And then I was, again, I've been looking on a, a different stalls. I noticed there was some... Um, some repainted uh, animated RCs around. I saw a blue one and a green one on different stalls. I think um, um, uh, Kapow had one. I think they had the green one. And, and uh, Indemand had the... Not Indemand. Um, Space Bridge had the blue one. But they were both going for about 40 quid. And I thought, well, I was, I was tempted to get one of those. And then I thought, well, now what about the, you know, the, the normal pink one? So I had a look in the, the glass cases on the Space Bridge. And... Uh, yeah, they uh, they had the pink one, so I got uh, the pink RC, and it was only thirty quid. So yeah, got hold of her. So yeah, I've got a couple of animated uh, figures this time round, which is quite good. There's, there's still a few more that I want to get. Ideally, now that I've watched the animated show, there's a few more characters I want to pick up, like Shockwave, most notably, or you know, Long Arm. So I want to get him. But uh, yeah, got RC. Uh, and then um, on the other end of the, the stall, uh, you got the guy sat on the end and he was, uh, people were coming up to him and asking him, have you got any spare parts for Transformers? Because he had these these big plastic, you know, sort of uh, part, you know, parts cases full of Transformer bits. So I asked him, I said, have you got any guns for G1 Snapdragon? So he had a route through and he found, a, dug out a couple of guns. He had some, some sun faded ones and he had um, one that had a, at the end was a bit chewed off. But he had some some perfect ones, and he was asking ten pound each for the uh, the perfect ones. And I was looking at them, and I thought, you know what? I'll uh, I'll have the, I'll have the good ones. So I got two guns for my G1 Snapdragon. So I'm just missing the wings now. I just need to get hold of a pair of wings, the the blue tail fins for him, and then my G1 Snapdragon will be complete. So I got a couple of guns for him. So it's always good to pick up you know spare parts when you can when they're available. 
And then I went to the other end of the store where they had their display, where they had the, the boxes of loose spots and they had that backdrop with all the carded figures on. And I had seen a loose um, Energon Rodimus and I was looking at it when I was looking at that uh, that other RC, that uh, that blue coloured RC. And I was, I was looking at it and thinking, yeah, this looks like a half decent figure. And um, when I looked through at the other end of the store, they had a boxed one. So I managed to get me... A brand new one. Um, yeah, Rodimus um, from uh, Energon. Um, and this is quite interesting because um, Mr. Ben, no, Moss Shop Ben was talking about Energon in the uh, RRCO issue 3 and he actually made a reference to <laughs> Rodimus being a truck. And uh, lo and behold, I've actually picked one up. <laughs> Um, this isn't a bad figure. It, 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 it's, it's quite good in its own right. I, I quite like the way, interesting way it transforms. Um, I know the Energon figures have that power links thing where they turn into shirt and trousers and combine together. And I'm not a huge fan of that line. And I don't think the Energon, well, the Energon show is garbage to be honest. It's 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 crap. I mean, Amada's okay. Cybertron, awesome, or you know, Galaxy Force, depending on which version you watch. That's an amazing show. But um, Energon is is just just it's just garbage um the toys on the whole they're a bit hit and miss but there are some good toys and uh yeah i quite like the look of this one this one's all right so uh, i managed to get hold of him and he was mint in box so you know for 20 quid that wasn't too bad i thought and uh Right, so last couple of bits, um, went over to see uh, Sid on a comic collection store. Now, I had seen, uh, I, was, I was in the market for a um, <clears throat> Cybertron Red Alert. Now, I noticed um, Dave on all the cool stuff had the Takara one boxed for about 30 quid. And I was looking around and I noticed Sid had a loose, you know, uh, uh, Hasbro one for uh, 15 quid. So I went and bought that. So I got uh, Energon, not Energon, Cybertron Red Alert, sorry. Um, yeah, so yeah, I bought a couple of Red Alerts lately and I uh, hadn't got the Cybertron one. And I, I like my Cybertron toys because uh, they're really well made. Um, unconventional transformation on this, the way the front of the back of the car, they sort of separate and come together to form the legs. That's uh, really, really unusual. Um, this guy's pretty beaten up. I mean, he's got loads of paint chips on him. His head's all mangled. Looks like he's... Uh, some kid's thrown him through the air and he's kissed the pavement with his head. You know, it's all scratched up. Um, and also, uh, one of the... Uh, these is, 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 is busted. Because it's transparent plastic and it's, um, it, it's cracked at the front here. I don't know why they're hinged. They don't hinge up for any particular reason. But uh, So, yeah, I got him. Um, and the reason I got him was so that I'd have enough money left to get the last figure. Which... I went back to uh, Mr. Mr. Um, Dave Tree, um, and it's kind of ironic because, you know, I bought my first figure of the day from Mr. Dave Tree in um, R.I.D. Bisque. And there's another figure, and I've seen this figure before on his store, and I've been halfway tempted to get it, and uh, I had just enough money left over to get it. Device label Grimlock. And, yeah, so I like Grimlock, and uh, he turns into... He turns into a mouse, <laughs> and it works. You know, it's got it's got buttons and a wheel, and and I actually plugged it into this computer, and it does work, <laughs> even though you know I use an optical mouse, but uh, you know, like a, a wireless one. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it actually works. Pretty neat little thing. Um, you know, I've had a couple of device again, a couple of device label um, uh, toys before. Uh, they're, they're they're pretty cool. They're pretty neat. Uh, so yeah, picked him up, and uh, yeah, so uh, he's a he's a pretty cool little figure, and he was the last thing that I bought at TF Nation this year. So there we go, <laughs> a huge haul as always. Um, I'm actually I was wanted to know how big this haul was because it had the potential to be the biggest haul I've ever got at a you know a national convention at Birmingham. 
So I uh, went back through my records and I've uh, done a comparison between the uh, the previous conventions I've gone to. That's uh, Auto Assembly in 2014, Auto Assembly 2015, and then TF Nation in 2016, 17, 18, and now 19. And when I look at the... the I, I'm comparing them on, on three factors. One, the number of items bought. Two, the uh, number of bots bought. And three, you know, the number of the amount of cash spent. And in terms of my previous hauls, um, 2019 was the biggest haul in terms of number of items that I purchased or items that I, I, I got. Uh, 43 items. Well, that's not including... Um, that isn't including these things. So you could say it was 45 items if you include these two things. Um, so yeah, and then the next nearest one is uh, Auto Assembly 2015, the last Auto Assembly when I got 41 items. Um, as regards to bots, um, I only got 39 bots this time. So that's uh, way short of uh, the 43 bots that I got in Auto Assembly 2015. As regards to the money spent, I mean, I don't like talking cash these days, you know, amounts. Um, but uh, I didn't spend as much at this convention as I did in my, you know, 2015 auto assembly. So number of items, yes. Bots and cash, no. So it, it's it's a big haul. It's, it's a big haul, but it isn't technically the biggest I've ever had in terms of, you know, number of bots I got and the number of uh, amount that I spent. But yeah, that's it for this year. Um, uh, obviously, <laughs> uh, that's TF Nation done for another year. Um, like I said, um, personally for me, it wasn't a stellar convention because I, I, I didn't really throw myself into the festivities as much this year. I, I didn't do any, any panels. I didn't do the opening and closing ceremonies. Um, I didn't, you know, socialize and talk to as many people as I would have liked there was a couple of people uh missing who weren't there that I would have you know would have liked to have uh, caught up with again this year but uh, they they weren't there sadly for whatever reason um and uh yeah uh and I I do think I you know it's that that one weekend of the year where I like to go crazy and mad and just blow loads of money on on plastic and uh, and I save up for it. Like I said, I I, I put money away every month and uh, you know build up my war chest and then uh, let loose on uh, on the, on the Saturday morning. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's it for this year. Um, next year, start saving up for TF Nation next year. Um, I probably I'm probably won't go quite so mad next year. Um, we'll have to see. I, I admit I am getting a bit. Uh, I know I'm, I'm I'm amazing myself about how much I, I'm actually buying, and uh, it is kind of obscene the amount of stuff that I'm getting at these conventions. Um, and that's me saying it about myself. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I, I might reel it in a little bit next year. We'll have to we'll have to see. But um, I'm I'm pretty pleased with the haul. Now, as for the best thing I got, um, a lot of people saying, "Well, what's the best thing you got?" kind of tough um because there was a, a lot of things that you know were pretty good um the, the, there were some crap things i mean i think some of the worst things i got was these authentics um grimlocks you know the build quality on them is so crap and the, the design and build quality is, is just garbage they're just they're just 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 junk um as for the the best thing um i don't know kind of difficult um i mean i really really like this guy really like him he's really awesome little figure um uh brunt i really like brunt he's he's really cool as well I, i'm i'm really impressed with him um as for the rest i, I don't know because they're, they're, they're all much of a muchness and and i, I like the majority of what I bought, I wouldn't have bought it otherwise. Um, there's, there's only a few um, items that you know could be regarded as stinkers, but there was nothing that was like so much better than the rest. And when I do my end of bot haul, when I do my first and worst, I think you'll find that my first bot is something that I didn't get at TF Nation because there is still a chance that a certain pair of third-party bots from Mastermind Creations are going to uh, turn up next week because. 
um, Kapow actually had some on their stall on the Saturday morning, and I asked them, I says, well, I've pre-ordered this figure, and I said, when's it coming out? He says, oh, I'll be shipping it out in the next week or so, so I'm hoping next week that uh, they're going to turn up, and if they do, brilliant. Uh, so that, that's that been me, TFR Wilderness, my haul video. <laughs> Hopefully some people have watched this and <laughs> been looking forward to seeing it, to see what i got. Again, a massive haul as always. Um, you know, like I said, I, I save up for these things and I just go crazy. Uh, maybe a little too crazy, but uh, that's just, just me. That's just the way I operate. Um, there will be an end of month bot haul video at the end of this month, but it, it won't be for this stuff necessarily. It, it's going to be for the other stuff that I got this month. So I picked up some other things this month, like my KTRTs. Um, and I've got like a KO you know, masterpiece figure. Uh, I've just... Today I've got uh, another a reissue of a um, sort of like a third party masterpiece figure. Um, so you know, I've got a few thing, other things going on and uh, that I will show you at the end of the, end of the month. And I will just, just go over this stuff again in sort of like a recap form. And uh, the video won't run out to 110 minutes. So, well, well, well not 110 minutes, but you know, not one, one hour, 10 minutes. But uh, anyway... Let's go. Uh, this video has gone on long enough. I've been TFR Wilners. Hopefully you've enjoyed my haul. I'll catch you all next time. Ta-da.